How's it going, everybody? Welcome in to another episode of the Mav Step Back Podcast. I'm your host, Dalton Trigg. Um, we have got a lot of stuff to talk about. The Mavs, they had one slight hiccup against the Golden State Warriors to end that five-game road trip they were on. They ended the road trip 4-1. and one. Um, So, overall, great road trip for the team. I mean, I think if before that trip started, if – you know, you had told us that <laughs> that the Mavs would go five and or four and one. We would have all, you know, accepted that and said, "Oh, that's great." Uh, but you know, that it was the fifth game of a five-game road trip. It was a weird situation where, you know, that game was the makeup game from earlier this season with the Warriors that had to be rescheduled due to the unfortunate uh, death of the Golden State Warriors assistant coach. <clears throat> And that just happened to be when it was rescheduled for. So the Mavs ended up in a situation where they played the two games in Sacramento. Then they had to fly to Houston. And then after they played in Houston, they had to fly back to California, uh, to San Francisco to play the Warriors, who were hot. You know, they've won five or six in a row now. So <clears throat> it uh, it was kind of a, a bad travel situation for them. But – uh, they they played relatively well. They played great defensively. The offense just wasn't there uh, for the Mavs in that Warriors game. They ended up losing 104 uh, to 100. It was a game that could have very easily been won if they had just played a little bit better. Uh, if the officiating had been a little bit you know tighter, or, or if they had been on point a little bit more toward the end, because you know the Mavs were only down two with like 15 seconds remaining, and uh, Clay Thompson, the ball was inbounded to Clay Thompson, and he traveled. <laughs> he, he took about five steps with that ball, and they did not call a travel. Uh, it ended up not matter. You know, after that point, the uh, the Mavs gave up two free throws to Clay Thompson, and you know that was the end of the game. But you know, it should have been the Mavs' ball with about 15 seconds left, only down two, and a chance to tie or take the lead. But it didn't work out that way. But uh, the Mavs, they bounced back. Uh, they uh, they finally got back home, you know, after nearly two weeks being on the road. Finally back home at American Airlines Center on Thursday night. They played the Hawks. Uh, they, uh, you know, they got a, they started out kind of sluggish. You know, the the Hawks shot making was really incredible in the first in the first half for the first quarter, and then halfway through the second quarter. And I was just I, I kept thinking to myself like. The, the shot making, this can't be sustainable for the Hawks. You know, Garrison Matthews was giving Mavs fans and, my, and myself included in that, uh, you know, Max Struess PTSD <laughs> from, that, from that fourth quarter uh, in Cleveland uh, a few weeks back or a month or so ago, however long that's been. I mean, he was hitting everything. Um, but the Mavs, they locked down defensively. Uh, in a game where Luca was shut out in two quarters, didn't score in two quarters, he still ended up with 25 points and nearly a triple double. Uh, Kyrie had 26 points, <clears throat> and the Mavs pulled out a 109 to 95 win over the Hawks, and they improved to 46 and 30. You take a look at the the Western Conference standings right now. The Mavs still have sole possession of the fifth seed. Uh, they're a full game up on the Suns and the Pelicans, who are right behind them. They are two full games up on the Sacramento Kings. Uh, now, since the Mavs currently own the tiebreakers against all those teams, that's essentially a two-game lead on the Suns and the Pelicans and a three-game lead on the Kings with six games left. So, uh, got to take in that, that tiebreaker stuff into consideration there, so... Mavs, they're looking good. They just have to keep on going. And now they have a chance to redeem themselves against the Golden State Warriors um, on Friday night. Tonight, second night of a back-to-back, -back, but it was also it'll also be a second night of a back-to-back -back for the Warriors, too, uh, who played the Houston Rockets and essentially ended their play-in hopes last night by blowing them out in Houston. The Rockets still have a very, very slim chance of making play in, but I mean, it's 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 not going to happen if they lose one more game, or if the Warriors win one more game, they're done. So, uh, I guess the 
the best case scenario for the Mavs would probably be to win this game tonight against the Warriors. Second night of a back to back. You know, they're they're an older team. <clears throat> you can probably um you can probably win this game if you bring the correct energy. Uh, I think they played a great defensive game the last time they played and they just didn't have the offensive the stuff they needed offensively. You know, Luca seemed a little bit off. Um they just they just didn't have it. And I think that, you know, if they have a little bit more attention to detail uh, in this next one, then they should be able to take care of the Warriors. But best case scenario for the Mavs tonight, in my opinion, find a way to beat the Warriors. You're at home. Uh, they're five and a half point favorites. You know, take business, beat the Warriors, and then hope that the Houston Rockets have just lost all hope. And then on the second night of a back to back for them as well, uh, hope they lose to the Miami Heat. And if that happens, then, you know, the Mavs get the win. They stay in fifth. They add to their cushion. And then the Rockets lose to the Heat, and they're officially eliminated, which means the next game for the Mavs, when they play the Rockets again, uh, you know, the Rockets could potentially end up going into tank mode at that point <laughs> and not playing their uh, their guys, you know, at all or extended minutes just because there's nothing to play for at that point. So that's kind of what you're rooting for as a Mavs fan tonight, not just for the Mavs beat the Warriors, but for the Heat to beat the Rockets and officially end their hopes, you know, so they don't have anything to play for when they play Dallas on Sunday. And then some other games tonight, we're looking at uh, the San Antonio Spurs are in New Orleans playing the the Pelicans, and look, the Pelicans are heavy favorites in this one, but we've seen uh, a lot of teams be heavy favorites against the Spurs, and sometimes it just doesn't matter if Victor Wimbanyama is on. Uh, you know, he is very capable of changing a game, as we've seen him do against the Suns a couple times and against some other teams. So uh, the Mavs would very much like to see Wimbanyama uh, bring his best stuff in New Orleans and get a win there. And then we've got the uh, Phoenix Suns playing at home against the Minnesota Timberwolves. So there is a there is a chance that the Mavs could gain another game of cushion on the Suns tonight, depending on how that one goes. You know, if both the Suns and the Pelicans lose, uh, you know, I I feel like the Mavs are very, you know, they're essentially they will have locked up a top six seed if that happens because having the tiebreaker over those teams and then having what will technically be a two-game cushion but essentially a three-game cushion because of those tiebreakers with, you know, six games left, I just think, you know, especially with some of the teams on the, the tanking teams on the roster the Mavs have to play now with the Hornets and the, the Pistons coming up on the schedule, I just think they're going to do well enough to avoid that play-in. Now, knock on wood, you know, hope <laughs> – Hope uh, all the injury stuff stays away. Mavs have had had to deal with that stuff way too much earlier this season, but I like the way things are trending. You know, Derek Lively, he's out right now, but there's optimism that he'll be back before, you know, the end of the regular season. And uh, it seems like everybody will be healthy going into the postseason, even Josh Green, who's been out for a while. Now, the Mavs haven't necessarily missed him. Their defense has actually gotten better uh, with him out, but, you know, he's a player who you can plug in there and feel more confident, uh, you know, having the ball in his hands if Tim Hardaway Jr. isn't having a good shooting night. You know, in some of these games here recently where the Mavs have plugged Jaden Hardy into the game alongside, you know, Kyrie and Tim Hardaway Jr., that three-guard lineup doesn't really do very well. I think you could, you know, instead of plugging Hardy in there, when you have Josh Green back, you can plug him into those situations and it probably – would work out better for you. So <clears throat> that's some stuff to keep an eye on uh, around the league. Oh, yeah, the nightcap. Uh, the Jazz play the Clippers. The Clippers beat the Denver Nuggets. Uh, Nikola Jokic had a chance to win it with a three, didn't hit it in Los Angeles, and the Clippers won. So they are still up two games on the Mavs for home court in the West, but they play on the second night of a back-to-back -back, uh, against the Utah Jazz tonight and Kawhi Leonard is still out so uh, I'm not expecting the Jazz to go in there and win but I'm just saying you know with Kawhi not playing for the Clippers and with as inconsistent as the Clippers have been over the last month or so 
Uh, I think anything's possible. So, uh, before we get into one of the specific points I wanted to talk about from that Hawks game and really from this Mavs win streak in general over the last several weeks, uh, I do want to tell you about Prize Picks. If you didn't know already, they're the number one daily fantasy sports app. Uh, it's very easy to go find them on the App Store, download their app. Uh, if you like daily fantasy sports, they make it super easy. You can go and find the NBA, the uh, college basketball, you know, whatever you want to play around with there, you can go find it very easily on their app. Uh, the pick them stuff is what I personally like to do. Pick higher or lower for your favorite players on points, rebounds, assists, uh, or a combination of those three. Uh, there, there's all different kinds of things to do, and they make it very easy to do. And there's a reason they're the number one daily fantasy sports app. So be sure to go do that if you like playing around with daily fantasy sports. And use our code STEPBACK, all one word, uh, to get up to $100 matched on your first deposit. So, I mean, if you if you play daily fantasy sports and you're going to be you know, depositing some money in there anyway, you might as well use our promo code and get more bang for your buck. So, for example, if you go make a first-time deposit of $100 and use our promo code STEPBACK, you will have $200 to play around with in your account. So be sure to go do that. Again, that's promo code STEPBACK uh, on the Prize Picks app. So be sure to do that. Uh, okay, <clears throat> one thing... I wanted to really focus on, and I feel like he, and I mean, I know we've talked about him a lot, but I feel like he really deserves his flowers for how he has played through his shooting struggles up to this point. But as PJ Washington, uh, he has been incredible for the Mavs since day one coming over from the Charlotte Hornets defensively. You know, his, his versatility, he's able to switch on to anybody. He can guard uh, one through five, you know, sometimes, you know, the fives might be able to overpower him, but they don't like just throw him around either. He's able to hold his own. I think he can guard one through five. He switches. His timing is good. He gets deflections. He fights for rebounds on both ends of the floor. Um, uh, he's shown he can pass a little bit too. Like he, he, he does everything that you would want a glue guy, a winning player, uh, a, a piece to tie together a championship team, he does all the stuff you'd want a guy like that to do. And here lately, the three-point shot has started to fall. So up until here recently, you know, he had been shooting under 30% from three in Dallas. On the season between Dallas and Charlotte, he's shooting slightly above 31%. The guy's a 36% three-point shooter for his career. So you, you figure there's going to be some positive – regression to the mean so to speak when it comes to his three-point shooting and sure enough we're starting to see some of that now he was five of eight from three against the hawks had 19 points eight rebounds three assists one steal one block uh was a plus 15 on the night you know there was there was one play that really stuck out to me where you know the the mavs it looked like they were going to miss an opportunity he fought for an offensive rebound uh Posted up deep in the paint, turned around with a little flip shot, and the Mavs got two points off of it. And, I mean, it, it wasn't a very dramatic kind of thing. It was very subtle. But, you know, it's, it's that kind of stuff that you look at and it's like, man, this is this is something the Mavs sorely missed uh, in the first half of this season. And no shade to Grant Williams or anything like that. But, you know, P.J. Washington is just so much more versatile. And he fits what this roster needs more than what Grant Williams did. So, you know, it, it's worked out very well. Uh, it's I, I feel great for PJ. You know, finally he's he's starting to see that three-point shot fall. Over his last eight games on six and a half uh, shots from deep per game, he's shooting 40.4%. Uh, and over the last six games, if we narrow it by a couple games, he's shooting 44% from three. So he is coming around at the best time for the Mavs. And look, the Mavs are playing their best basketball with the postseason about to start. Uh, you know, they've won uh, they've won 12 of their last 14 games overall. 
One of those games was when Luca didn't play on the second night of a back-to-back in Oklahoma City, and they still almost won, only lost by seven points. Uh, and then the other one was against the Warriors at the end of that five-game uh, road trip where it seemed like they were just kind of uh, out of gas, so to speak, running on fumes. So, you know, aside from those two games, the Mavs have been pretty much perfect. Uh, in that 14-game stretch, they have the number one defensive rating in the league at 105.6. So, you know, better than the Celtics, uh, better than the Timberwolves, the Thunder, all those teams in that in the last 14 games, the Mavs have the number one defense, which tells you, you know, just how hard everybody is working across the board. Uh, they're switching everything. They're they're if they don't switch and they're you know guys are fighting over screens hard and staying with their guys, uh, staying attached, getting deflections. It's all going well for the Mavs, and you know they've been top ten in offense during that stretch as well. But the defense is the biggest thing. I mean, you know when you have Luca and Kyrie on the team, you're going to get points at some point. Uh, and then you have guys, capable shooters around those two, they're going to get going at some point too. Uh, I just think the Mavs are in a really, really good spot heading into the postseason because they've proven to themselves that they're capable of being elite defensively. They are capable of playing championship-level defense. They've proven that. And and proving it to yourself is the biggest thing, in my opinion, because now the confidence is there. They have – their confidence is sky high. So now you get the offense rolling again, too, knowing how you can play defense. And P.J. Washington, one of your main players, uh, is finally starting to see his shot go down. And, you know, I just think the sky is the limit uh, for the Mavs going into the postseason. But after that game last night, they asked P.J. about – uh, about his his confidence and how the ball is going in for him now. And uh, PJ said, my confidence has been growing each and every game. He said uh, he's been in the gym working on his shot. And he said, for me, it's just taking it with confidence, step into it, make sure my footwork is right. It went in tonight, but they won't go in every night. So for me, just trying to be consistent, doing the same thing with my footwork. And – You know, that's the thing. That's what I love about P.J. Washington is he doesn't let any shooting struggles affect him anywhere else on the court. Like He he trusts his work, and he trusts that eventually that shot is going to fall. But even if it's not falling, you're still going to get a dog effort from him on the defensive end, and that's what makes him so valuable to the Mavs. And, you know, I I, I see that, uh, you know, Kyrie kind of took a shot at ESPN last night after that game talking about how they the ESPN gave the Mavs a, a D uh, grade for trading for him last season. They did the same thing with P.J. Washington this year. They gave the Mavs a D uh, for trading for him. And, you know, it, it seems to have worked out pretty well in both <laughs> situations. So, uh, you know, we'll see. I, the Mavs are in a great spot. I think uh, – I expect I'm not I'm not guaranteeing it, but I do expect them to have a better effort against the Warriors tonight than they did, um, you know, a few days ago in San Francisco. You know, being at home, not having to travel, getting that first game back from a long road trip out of the way was key. You know, we saw the sluggishness from them coming out against Atlanta, and then they finally got it together. Well, now they're settled in. They've got to stay at home, and you know, even though it's the second night of a back to back at least you're not traveling like the Warriors have been doing here the last few games. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Again, you know, the standings are are tight still, but the Mavs, they are in good position. If they take care of the Warriors tonight and the Rockets lose, then they'll they'll play the Rockets on Sunday where the Rockets have nothing to play for and probably uh, won't be playing all of their guys, or even if they are, they're going to be kind of deflated because, again, there's nothing to play for. And then next week, Tuesday, the Mavs reunion with Grant Williams in Charlotte. So even though Charlotte has nothing to play for and they're tanking, you know, he he might have a little bit personally to play for. Uh, so we'll see how that game goes. I'm sure P.J. Washington will be excited to play uh, against his former team as well. And then Wednesday, second night of a back-to-back against Miami, I could see that game being a game where – the Mavs try to sneak 
uh, in some rest for Luca and Kyrie, depending on how the rest of the, the games go between now and then. Uh, they could be close to locking up a top six seed. So I could see that Miami game being a, kind of a throwaway game and then have Luca and Kyrie come back strong to finish out against Detroit on Friday and then the last game of the regular season on Sunday. So we're right there, y'all. We have made it through, uh, almost made it through an entire season. It's been a fun ride. It's been a roller coaster ride, which, I mean, we'd expect nothing less from our Dallas Mavericks, right? Uh, it, it's always a, a roller coaster ride. And uh, first half of the season wasn't that great. Second half of the season pushed the right buttons with the trades. And now they've been rolling. Luca, will he get MVP? Will he not? You know, we'll, we'll have to keep an eye on all of that stuff. But it's been a lot of fun. And I've enjoyed, you know, keeping up with it and covering all the stuff that has happened. And it's going to be a fun postseason, too. I can tell you that. It's going to, it's going to be great. I'm going to, be trying to get out to Dallas for a couple of games myself. Uh, and hopefully it's a deep playoff run to where, you know, we're watching these guys uh, in June. So cross your fingers. We're hoping for it. We think they're capable. Now they just have to go out there and do it. They have the talent, but, you know, they have to actually go out there and uh, put that talent and their newfound confidence to work and, you know, string together some wins in the postseason. So we'll see. First time the Mavs were in the – Playoffs with Jason Kidd went all the way to the Western Conference Finals when they didn't have adequate front court depth. And now they have that. Now they have the second superstar with Kyrie next to Luka, uh, who is a step above where JB was during that 2022 run. So we'll see how it goes. I think the Mavs are very equipped, you know, to make a deep run. We'll just have to see how it goes. But, guys, appreciate y'all joining me today uh, to talk about where things stand with the Mavs. Be sure to go like, rate, and subscribe on all your favorite podcast platforms. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Uh, give us your comments, you know, uh, your your takes in the comments of the videos. You know, what? where do you think the Mavs are going to finish? Do you think Luka has a legit shot at MVP this late in the season? How do you expect them to translate what we've seen over the last 14 games into the playoffs? Let us know. Go to the comments. Let us know what you feel about it. Uh, be sure to go follow me on Twitter, too, at Dalton underscore Trig, where I'm always giving my Mavs takes on a daily basis. Uh, if I'm not posting my DallasBasketball.com work there, I'm just posting you know general thoughts throughout the day uh, when I have a chance about things going on with the Mavs. So, be sure to do that as well. Guys, appreciate it. Y'all have a great rest of your day. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you next time.